how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out Wholehearted by Extreme. Fantastic, super awesome song, loads of fun to play. I'll be doing it on a 12 string guitar. Now you can do it on a six string guitar too, it will work. I played it in cover bands for years on a six string guitar. Sounds of course more like the record on a 12 string guitar. However, it's going to take a little bit more practice. You've got to be a little bit more careful with the fingers, but uh, I think it's worth it. It sounds great. Uh, first really important thing is that we are in E flat tuning, which is what Extreme used for the album version. Uh, so each string is just tuned down one semitone. Very common on a 12 string guitar as well to tune it down either a semitone or a tone. Uh, I think some of the live ones I've seen of Extreme are actually tuned down a tone. So you might want to explore that as an option as well, depending on what you want to play along with. There are four main riffs in this song and I'm going to teach you the riffs. Uh, and you can put them together just by listening to the recorded section. We've got the intro, we've got the main riff, we've got the chorus, and the little riff at the outro of the chorus. Um, I'm going to go through some of the rhythms with you, but there are a lot of kind of interesting, rhythmic, syncopated things going on in this song. And for me to try and write them down or count them out or whatever is going to be really complicated. And actually, the better way for you to learn it is to listen to the original recording. So. When you, as you're doing this tune and learning the parts, you should be you know, like listening to me, maybe writing down your own tab or whatever would be great. But as well, uh, you really need to be listening to the re original recorded version to pick up on all of those kind of different rhythmic things because there's just it would be pointless going through them all. So uh, I will try and explain some of them, however, and try and get you counting as well. So I reckon probably the intro is a good place to start. Uh, so the intro is all just a D chord moving around. So it's starting off at the, the in a regular position playing a D chord. And then we move it up two frets, which officially would be a, an E slash D, I guess. Um, does it again. The second time there's a little... which just does a little strum and then picks out from the thinner string, second string, third string. The third time... Toward the end of the bar, he starts bringing in a little bit of strumming. And the last bar, he moves that D chord up one more. And he really does a big rhythmic build on there. So let me just play that for you. It's going to go like this. that little build up, I was trying to stop it there, but it's, uh, that last little bit is the little build up into the main riff. Now the rhythm, winding out to two and three, four. That's the first thing you gotta realize, this whole thing's gonna be 16th notes, right? So whether you're writing it out or counting along, winding out to two and three, four, one, two, Daka kaka daka kaka sixteenth notes, right? So one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. And I'm explaining that now because nearly all of the rhythm stuff in this is this hand's going to be moving like that. One e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. And for most of these kind of tunes, if the hand stops moving, it's all going to go a little bit wonky. There's a little bit of riffage going on in here where you can maybe get away with varying it, but all of the rhythm stuff, you definitely want to keep that hand moving. So even here. Even if my hand doesn't appear to be moving much, it's still actually doing the little wobbly for the count, you know? I mean, maybe I don't do it every time, but definitely as the rhythm gets trickier. So that's a, it's a really big deal. Da 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 da. That's a down down up down down up down down up down down up. Is that little you know what's happening rhythmically toward the end? So uh, again, I'll reiterate. It's really important that you're listening to the original recording to pick up on those accents and that right rhythm, and just making sure that you keep that hand moving. I'm going to exaggerate it now, but. <laughs> how it gets that motion here. Down, up, down. Okay, now it's time to check out the main riff, and there's quite a lot going on here. So I'm just going to play it for you at a kind of a medium speed, then a real slow speed so you can hear the bits, then I'll go through and explain each of the bits to you. So it uh, goes like this. Even 
and slower. Now let's check out all of these bits. So we're starting off here with the first finger in the fifth fret of the fourth string. Thumb is reaching over to mute the thicker string and the underneath of the first finger is muting all of the strings under the note that it's playing. So the thinner three strings should be muted by the underneath of the first finger. So we're really just playing, we're, even if we've strummed all the strings, we only really want to hear the fifth string, which will be open, and the fourth string, which is our fretted note. And now we've got a little hammer on with the third finger in the seventh fret of the fourth string. Now the rhythm. Down, up, down, down, down. Explain that last little bit first. After that, up. We've got second finger in the third fret of the fifth string with a little bend, not like a little tweak, not really a proper bend. And then an A chord, so we're just using a little bar with our first finger. We're strumming the open A string, fourth string, and third string. We don't need to worry about any notes past that, really. So, down, up, down, 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 up, down, down, down. Now, down, up, down, 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 but we keep our hand moving. Down, up, down, 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 up, down, down, down. Again, I'm just trying to emphasize with you how important it is that you keep that hand moving through that section. Um, you're not just playing down, up, down, 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 because you're playing all the other ones too, but those are the accents. They're the ones that you're going to hear, the most dominant kind of strums. The other ones are kind of a lot quieter and they fill out the part, but they're not the part. Make sense? So, first chunk, make sure you get that down first. Second chunk. Now we're using pretty much all down strums for this. We've got our first finger doing a little kind of mini bar on the fifth fret on the third and fourth strings. And then we're going to hammer our second finger down on the sixth fret of the third string. Classic blues. Kind of blues lick. Then we've got... Now, I can't hear whether it's just the open string or whether the third finger is going down to play the note A. It's an octave apart and on a 12 string I just can't hear which one it is. But I've been tending to play just the open A. So the little hammer on, then the open A, then third finger, doing a little bar across the seventh fret of the third and fourth strings. Then the little hammer on thing again. Then the open A, the little bar, and then the little hammer on thing again. Slowly. Yeah, so all down. A little bit of palm mute in there as well. really what you want to be practicing, just that little cycle of that bit. When you're cool with that, you join the two bits up. First part again. There's a slight difference with this one. So it's the same sort of hammer on -y thing at the start. But the very last note, you're going to play a down pick with this note, the third finger on the seventh fret of the fourth string. It's going to flick off to the first finger, and then that first finger is going to flick off to the open. So, 7th fret, 5th fret, flick it off to the open. 2nd finger is going to jump down and play the 3rd fret of the 5th string. And then you're playing the top part of a D chord, uh, which would be the open 4th string, 1st finger, 2nd fret of the 3rd string, 3rd finger, 3rd fret of the 2nd string, and nothing on the thinner string. So, uh, that part... You're going to have to probably practice that a bit as well. Seven, five, open, three, to the D. So 
far now. We've got the three element. And now the fun bit. It's actually nowhere near as hard as it sounds. Uh, so we've got our first finger on the fifth fret. We do a hammer on with the third finger in the seventh fret. And then we're going to pluck the G string. So it's down, hammer, and then an up pick on the G string. If I can do it vaguely accurately, it would help. Then we move that shape down to the third fret and go third, fifth, and then that G string again. Then uh, first finger, second fret, hammer on the second finger in the third fret. Then we've got this little first hammer on the second finger of the third fret, flick it off back to the first finger. I think that flicks off to the A string, but it's so quick you don't really hear it. And then second finger down on the third fret of the thicker string. And then to our A chord, right, slowly. Plenty practice on that, especially that last one. It's a little bit, well, for me, it was awkward under my fingers. Uh, and that's the main riff. We've got all of the sections now, so you want to be practicing that nice and slow. I'm going to do it a couple of times nice and slowly now. Here we go. Three, four. Probably the main thing that people want to learn with this tune. Great riff, man. Really clever. I like it a lot. Uh, so we're into the chorus. Now the chorus is back, starting off with our little D chord thing. So, so we start off with a D. Down, up, down. Then we're up to an A triad over the D. So we're moving right up to the ninth fret. So it's open D string, then nine, ten, nine. We move that back two frets, which would be then G over D. Oh, if I can do it right, that'll help. And that little, it's a little A triad. So first finger barring the fifth fret on the thinnest two strings, second finger playing the sixth fret of the third string. It's the top part of the little A bar chord, you know. And then we've got this nice little run up on A. So this is uh, second finger in uh, the, it's an A7 chord, second finger in the second fret of the fourth string and third finger in the second fret of the second string. Then we move up, the slide the second finger up to the fourth fret. So it'll be open, four, open, third fret with the first finger kind of like a D over A. Now we've got this other kind of A minor, so third fing uh, second finger slid up now to the fifth fret, so we've got open, fifth, open, fifth, open, then back, and back to the original A7. giving you kind of approximate rhythms there. But again, you've got to listen to the recording. Got to listen to the recording, got to listen to the recording. Uh, then it does the same thing. And 
And we're at the chorus. Chorus is starting off with a G chord. So, big, proper 80s rock G. Or 90s rock, really, I suppose, it sh I should say, not 80s. Uh, so, second finger playing the note G, the third fret of the thicker string. You can put your first finger down if you want, but it probably sounds better without it, to be honest. So, just let your second finger mute the fifth string. Open D string, open G. Third finger and fourth finger on the thinnest two strings on the third fret. And we've got this little climb up. So, bass, chord, bass, open A. Second fret of the A of the fifth string, and then sorry, I'm tongue tied. there there. I've got a second finger on the third fret of the fifth string, which gives us now our C add nine chord. Lift off little finger, so you should end up with third uh, nothing on the thicker string. Three two open three open G chord bass. There's some random picking out his stuff. I don't know exactly which notes he's playing, but. Yeah, so pick out a few arpeggios or not. D. Now it's just like the intro D to E over D. And again. After that, that's the, the kind of the main chorus -y bit, which there's a couple of times that repeats that section later in the song without going to this next bit, which is why I've separated it out, uh, which is there's... So we've got the D, so the D with the E, then... Uh, so that part we've already discussed. We've got now the second finger, third fret of the fourth string, open G string or third string, third finger on the third fret of the second string. So we've got here now fourth, third, second, second, third. Then we move our first finger to the second fret of the fourth string. And then we pluck the second string with our third finger still on it. Then we go back to playing the fourth string, which our first finger is still on the second fret of the fourth string. Play it, flick it off, second finger goes down on the third fret, uh, which is the note C. Uh, So that's all of the parts to Wholehearted. Now all you've got to do is put them together. Practice each little bit slowly, listen a lot to the recording to pick up on all of those bits of rhythm. Just make sure you keep that hand moving. If you keep the hand moving, the rhythm will fall under your hand correctly. It's really important. Lots of listening combined with remembering to keep that hand moving and you'll get all your picking directions and stuff sorted out for you and where those accents are. So uh, let's go to a close-up and I'll play it through slow-mo a couple of times so you can see how all of the bits are going together.
I hope you enjoy playing this tune as much as I do. I think it's a really great fun song to play on an acoustic guitar, especially a 12 string. See you for another lesson or song very soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.